Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, Jesse Warden. Currently 33 degrees with sleet and rain mix of ice in New York City right now. I was there two or three days ago. It's now 79 degrees and sunny in Richmond. This is awesome. And I brought Her Majesty with me. He's over there. There is her 360 camera on the pole. She's capturing traffic with a 360 camera to do a time lapse. So we've got to do a bunch of these today. It's trial and error. Great day to be outside and do programming with my laptop. The issue with the roll dice function is that it returns a zero. When you roll a die, a six-sided die, it has six sides. A number between one and six. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's six numbers. However, if you return a zero, that's actually a seventh. So we don't want seven numbers from a six out of die. That's not very random, that's just strange and wrong. So we gotta fix that, we gotta verify that this function never returns zero. Let's actually replace the describe with a dot only. How do we test the fact that it may return a zero? Well, we have two options. We can refactor the function, make it a lot easier to snag these pieces that we need, right? This particular point to do the multiplication, this to round the number, this to actually add it to that total and then they're returning the grand total that this for loop keeps adding over and over and over again. But again, we're trying to make minimal changes to this code. Having unit tests that randomly fails a bad practice. You can ensure it with a high enough sample size. So we're going to do that now. We're going to take a sample size. We're going to say person roll dice should not have zero in a 1000 sample size. Sample size just means we're going to have a thousand numbers and we're going to roll that dice a thousand times and hopefully none of those are ever zero it's unfortunately the best we can do given the fact that we have to deal with the code we're given sometimes you write code that you don't like and i'm here to do it with you so again no it's bad practice but it's intentionally created in a, the best possible way in a unit test with a suite of other unit tests with the knowledge that you're going to refactor in the future but you have to do the due diligence first let's switch to the browser real quick i'm going to show you a trick with arrays that you may not know when you create an array, you can actually use the new array syntax. The first parameter is the length of the array. So if I create a new array with a length of 10, it's going to have 10 items of nothing. In this case, Chrome is nice enough to say undefined times 10, which means the array has 10 items of nothing. Now, Lodash has a wonderful method called fill. And with fill, you can actually fill it with whatever you want. So if you already have an array with items, you can put things in it or replace. So if I have cow and I want to fill it with moo, right? It'll put 10 moves in it. So it discounts through the existing array, no matter how many items it has in it, and replaces it with whatever you give it. And you can do some surgery on the start and index. So we're going to start everything with zero. And keep in mind, this mutates the original array, right? It doesn't give you a new one. It just changes your existing cow. So it now has 10 items of zero. We're going to do that except with a thousand. And we're going to start with zero because we want to make sure that we never get zero, even though you and I know that if math.random turns zero times 20, it's gonna be zero once it's rounded down. But we have to prove ourselves with unit test that's repeatable, so we're gonna do the best we can. Our sample, which is a new array of a thousand instead of a 10, we're gonna fill it with zero. So we have a thousand zeros, and if you wanna see it, we can go ahead and show you now. Nodes actually will show you the first 100, which is kind of funny, actually. So if we test it out, you'll see the first 100 zeros, and then it's like, and 900 more, <laughs> which is kind of cool. Now that we have an array, let's put 1,000 roll dices in it. The way we do that is we create a new array of roll dice samples. So we'll call map, which is a way that says, hey, for every item in this array, replace it with whatever I give you. What, what are we going to give it? Well, instead of this item, we don't really care what the zero is. We know every single one of these is a zero. We're going to replace it with person.roll dice. 1d20. So the exact same amount of dice, 1, and the exact same number, 20. And it'll give us a random number each time. We're hoping that at some point math.random is low enough where it gives a 0. And we can prove that the algorithm is busted. So let's fix our spelling error here and print out the roll dice samples. Roll dice samples. Change that, and correct spelling mistake, run npm test. Okay, even without scrolling, I can already see some zeros. So we know we're on the right track, which is awesome. Now that we have that, the, there's a variety of ways to look in arrays in Lodash. We're just trying to do the simplest for now. So we're just gonna say filter, any zeros. So is if we're gonna filter out all the items in the array that equal zero. 
Hopefully, if the algorithm works, there's no zero. It's always a number between 1 and 20. Sadly, in the code, they just had no unit tests, so we're adding it now. We're going to use filter because it's the easiest, and we'll say roll dice samples. Out of every single one of these, is any of them equal to zero? If, it, if that returns true, right, to this, this little predicate here, this little arrow function, if this returns true, if item is zero, then it'll return true and be included in this array. We're hoping this is going to be empty and that the roll dice function works, but you and I both know it doesn't. We've already <laughs> are well on our way to proving it's not. So out of a thousand samples, how many zeros are we going to get? I'm going to say any zeros dot length should equal zero. Sadly, this test you and I know will fail because 30 samples out of a thousand were zero. That's sad. So if we run it again, we're going to keep hopefully getting a reasonable amount. In this case, 20, 25, 29, 17. Now, at some point, randomly in the future, this could fail, but we've got a high enough sample size that it's there. We could even increase this to 10. We don't want to have slow unit test ever, but in our case, this is special. It's not that bad, so there we go. We can almost guarantee now with a high enough sample size, it'll always fail. We can prove that their algorithm is busted. All do an initial state proving the bugs without modifying the original code.